Blessed love once again. Give thanks for each and every one that is coming in. Give thanks continually for the life giver and the keep of life. We welcome you to the open house session here at the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge. Education is the key. We definitely greet you in the name of Negus Senegas, Emperor Haile Selassie I. And of course, I am the Honorable Priest Isaac, mastering the ceremonies for you today. Again, let me say it is a joy and with great love and appreciation, we are very happy that you would have taken the time to come and sit with us this afternoon for this very special presentation that we have in store for you. Now, the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge has been definitely founded under the principles of edifying our people in general, edifying the populace um, on a whole, and of course, definitely even as it relates to bringing more light and more knowledge to our people, that is really our work, that is really our mantra. And of course, this is just an example of what it is that we have to offer. So we invited you here today for some very special events. First of all, we will be officially premiering our brand new short full length, well, short film documentary, Anu, the Ancient City. And then afterwards, we will be having a relaunch of our international homeschool program. And then to seal up the afternoon activities, I will be giving a short lecture on the subject, the rudiments of ancient astronomy, while at the same time, I will be launching officially the brand new ancient astronomy course, which I know many of you really came forward to partake of today. So this is going to be a very wonderful um, day what we are having today, a very wonderful sit down. I intend to really uh, make sure that you uh, have a wonderful time as we definitely go forward in this situation here. Now, I would like to, even before we go too far, just highlight to you our international website, which is the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge website, and our website specifically, just so you could have an idea of what it is that we are doing here. Now, our website, we clearly show you the different courses that we are offering even at this moment. As I said, this evening, we are officially launching the, the homeschool, relaunching the homeschool program. Many of you would have already been on the homeschool program for sure, but we have definitely stepped it up and of course brought it to a higher level. So this is something that we all will be definitely happy to look at this evening. Also, we will be, as I said, launching the ancient astronomy course. And let me just tell you now, for those of you who came in this evening to, to see what we have to offer as it relates to the ancient astronomy course, I'm telling you, you're going to definitely be happy with what you see. So I'm looking forward um, to when we reach to that section of the program. So again, I'm just encouraging everyone, you could visit our website, which is priestisaacinstitute.com, priestisaacinstitute.com. Now our ancient astronomy course, I want you to hear this good family, our ancient astronomy course itself, uh, 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 the value of it is actually a 275. And that's not the right uh, word, the value of it, but this is what it really goes for, $275. In fact, I could say only 
$275. And I must say, before the end of this, this afternoon's program, you will see for yourself, again, the value of this ancient astronomy course that we would have put together here at the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge. Now, for today and today only, the course is going for $100. Now, after today, we will still be having a special of 195 until we officially, now officially means that the, the course itself will begin on the 21st day of, 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 uh, of May. So when you sign up today, you're only paying $100. If you're to sign up after today, before the 21st day of May, it will be 195 and anyone who will sign up afterwards they will just pay the full price which is 275 and that's a marvelous price there's nothing even if there was no discount whatsoever that's a very wonderful uh, price as it relates to what you will be getting and in a moment you will see what you will be getting so family we have a wonderful afternoon for you you know as i said take time to go through our our website to see what it is that we have on offer for you. Um, in a few moments, we will be hearing our brand new documentary again, which is Anu, the Ancient City. And then afterwards, the Honorable Empress Naya will be making a very special presentation as it relates to the relaunching of the International Homeschool Program. And then afterwards, um, I will return again and we will be going into the whole aspect of the rudiments of ancient astronomy. Now, this is going to be wonderful. When you hear about rudiments, rudiments really means the basics, you know, the beginning of, you know, how it really started, the foundation. So really that's where we will be going. I know many ones are very interested in their sign and 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 how they can you know you know um, detect what was taking place in the heavens when they were born well that's a very simple thing to do you know family but the main thing is understanding the science of it what it really means how you calculate the astronomical clock you know and then as i said how did the ancients look at it how did the ancients value the the movements of the heavens how did they actually stand you know the, the the meaning of the planets and the meaning of the different constellation etc etc so all of these things we will be going into so again family what i want to do now i just want those of you who are already with us give thanks for your presence and what i'm going to do we are going to begin by presenting to you as i said our brand new documentary this is a short um, um, short documentary, only about 20 minutes, but definitely exciting. This one is entitled Anu, the Ancient City. Now, this one was really prepared, of course, by the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge. But I must say, and do dare say, that the vast majority, or basically all of the technical work, the videography, the, the the graphics that you see in this documentary was done by the Honorable Prince Al Masse. So it's going to be wonderful, family. Give thanks again. Just humble yourself and sit in, and all will be joyful. All right. So I present to you Anu, the ancient city. Are you interested in learning ancient astronomy, archaeoastronomy, or astrotheology? Well, the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge is now offering certified courses in the field of astronomy covering all the above mentioned. Sign up now for our online courses or visit us in Antigua in the caribbean for seven days and seven nights of practical underground research plus archaeoastronomical observation on green castle hill you will learn how to identify the stars the constellations and the planets 
as well as their makeup and their value. This will be a studycation. Enroll today by visiting our website priestisaacinstitute.com or sending us an email priestisaacinstitute at gmail.com or search us out on TripAdvisor, the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge, Ancient Astronomy, Archaeoastronomy, and Astrotheology, the wave of the future. Antigua, a hundred and eight square miles, seated in the northeastern section of the Caribbean island chain, the home of Green Castle Hill, Mount Anu, almost 600 feet in the air, comprising of countless of volcanic megaliths that relate to the solstices and the equinoxes, also aligned with the movement of the astronomical clocks, stars, constellations, megaliths that correlate even to the planets. Green Castle Hill, also referred to as Shaw Hill by the native people, is also considered the Stonehenge of the Caribbean. Its unique array of massive rocks show themselves in many different formations, thrones, seats, and even the esoteric expression of the reproductive system of both male and female, the phallic and the vulva. According to Dr. Mara Imbert, archaeoastronomer from the University of the West Indies, it is this phallic stone that has a specific alignment with the circumpolar stars of the northern celestial pole. This exciting connection takes place every spring equinox around the 21st day of March. Green Castle Hill is an astronomical haven where hierophany after hierophany can be detected. The natural connection with the stones and the stars is breathtaking. What is also awe-inspiring is the surrounding landscape that also connects to Mount Anu, Green Castle Hill. Pyramid-shaped hills and even islands in the distance also align themselves with the sun and moon and planets at peak times and specific times of the year. Because of its astronomical connection, there is a natural exchange, a constant exchange of energies and frequency from the heavens to the earth, celestial and terrestrial, on Green Castle Hill. This has been proven with experiments that have been carried out using compasses and crystals 
where their vibration pattern is obvious and constant. The tune in fork effect. The frequency and vibration of one also affects the frequency and vibration of the other. The stars to the stone and each stone correlate with each other and of course those who are present on the hill. This is why this space, like other sacred spaces, opens the mind, enhances the vision of the third eye, poetry, inspiration, and many different forms of insight comes alive in the sacred zone of Green Castle Hill. The River Happy, also referred to as the River Nile, flowing out of the highlands of Abyssinia, Ethiopia, Uganda, Kenya. This is the longest river on the planet Earth, over 4,000 miles long. It is along the banks of this great and mighty ancient river where you find the origin of civilization, art, culture, script, language, mathematics along the banks of the river Nile. Even the origin of human beings in general can be found along the banks of the river Nile. Northeast Africa, Kush, ancient Ethiopia, Nubia, Tarseti, ancient Kemen, also known as Egypt. The ancient African astronomers always connected the great river Nile, the great river Happy, with the Milky Way, which is the galaxy that our solar system is lodged in. On the northeast section, of this terrestrial Milky Way of the River Nile stands a very ancient and sacred city. It is considered the most holiest of the cities in ancient African history. Heliopolis. Heliopolis is known as the City of the Sun. Heliopolis is also referred to as the city of the priests for it is at heliopolis where the ancient rites were issued where the priests were initiated where the ancient study and universities were established for those who were stepping into the clergy for those who were stepping into the priesthood of the god Amun. Heliopolis was also referred to as the city of the sun. The sun was seen as Ra. Heliopolis, more than any other city in ancient Kemet, ancient Egypt, has been ravaged to the point that its many, many, many amulets have been removed and taken to many parts of the earth and only one remains. Rome alone has over a dozen stolen abilities. The United States of America, London and France also has abilities stolen from Heliopolis. The standing abilic, which is rightfully referred to as the Tekken, is symbolic of Asa's phallic, the penis of Osiris in mythology very similar to the phallic stone on Mount Anu in Antigua. But outside of that connection with the obelisk, the only standing Tekken in Heliopolis and the phallic stone on Mount Anu in Antigua, Greencastle Hill, there is much more than meets the eye. For you must keep in mind that ancient Heliopolis in Africa is an ancient city known as the city of the priests. What is interesting 
is that Antigua in the Caribbean was also referred to as the island of the priests. Both cities, the island and Heliopolis in Africa are referred to as Sun City. Antigua is referred to as Sun City while Heliopolis just by its name Heliopolis means the city of the sun. It's the name given to it by the Greeks. As far as their location and where they're situated in the earth, although Heliopolis is an inland city and Antigua is an island by itself, they're both situated to the northeastern section of their habitat. So in other words, the River Nile, which by the way, has a similar shape to that of the Caribbean island chain. On the banks of the River Nile to the northeastern section, there you have Heliopolis. On the northeast section of the Caribbean island chain, you have 108 square miles of Antigua. What is interesting as well is that the symbol for Antigua is the sun in his flag, the city of the sun. While the sun, Ra, the Aten, is also the symbol for Heliopolis in Africa, in Kemet. Heliopolis is not the original name for Heliopolis. It's the name given to it by the Greeks. Its ancient name is Anu. A-N-U, Anu. Antigua's port abbreviation is Anu, A-N-U, Anu, both city of the sons, both city of the priests, both on the northeastern section of their respective habitation, the city of the priests, Anu. In 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Several months after in the western world, he came across the island known as Waladli, which he renamed Santa Maria de la Antigua, one of the holiest churches in Spain. It is also said that for one reason or the other, he never stepped foot on the land. We have already witnessed in this documentary the spiritual characteristics of the island Santa Maria de la Antigua which means Saint Mary of the ancient. The word Antigua means ancient from time immemorial. Its ancient spirit can be seen not only in its connection to ancient Kemet and ancient Heliopolis, not only in the countless of megaliths that align with the stars and the zodiac belt and the full array of constellations, but even in our lingua, the language, the dialect, what some refer to as the creole of the people of Waladli, which we have called Wadadli, Antigua. The dialect is called Rabak, and within it you find words that are directly not only connected to the motherland, but connected to the name of God specifically. Nyam, which means to eat in Antigua's dialect, is an Akan. West African word for God. Wadu is also another word for God. Gimia and Afumi, which means give it to me and it's mine, respectively, are both names, African terms for the Most High. Awe Yogo, 
which we would consider where are you going away yoko is a chant you would hear the ifa priestess recite this is but evidence to show you the spiritual nature of the island of antigua santa maria de la antigua the ancient land it is named after a church estimated to be 108 square miles by nature. The Vatican City sits on 108 acres of land as the number 108 is extremely mystic. For it is said that the universe is made up of 108, 108 elements. This is according to ancient texts. The current periodic table claims a few more than 108. The diameter of the sun is 108 times that of the diameter of the earth. The average distance from the earth to the sun is equivalent to 108 suns in a row. The average distance from the earth to the moon is equivalent to 108 moons in a row and in zen buddhism and many other ancient uh, rites from the eastern world they would use 108 in their chants and the amount of beads that they would use for prayer 108 is the square mileage of antigua santa maria de la antigua saint mary of the ancient Zimbabwe, Monomotapa, the ancient city. The Motobo Mountains, also known as the Modobo Mountains, the mountains of the great boulders. These mountains, according to the great Credo Mutra, has a connection with the astronomical clock. These boulders and heavy megaliths are said to align with the solstices and the equinoxes similar to Greencastle Hill. Buried at the top of the Motobo Mountains is British colonialist Cecil Rhodes. He requested to be buried there at his death. Amongst the boulders that align with the astronomical clock because of his understanding of the importance of being buried amongst the stars. In Antigua, Greencastle Hill, Mount Anu, where the megaliths also align with the heavens and the astronomical clock. At the top of Greencastle Hill, Mount Anu, there is a grave, and this grave belongs to another British colonialist former governor of the Leeward Islands. One Oliver Risdale, affectionately referred to as Governor Baldwin. He, like Cecil Rhodes, would have been privy to certain understanding of the esoteric world and its connection to the terrestrial play, meaning that they understood the power of being buried amongst the megaliths and the boulders that align with the stars. All over the ancient world and even the modern world, monuments and structures are being erected to align the deceased with the celestial afterworld. We of the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge and the Rastafari Experience Antigua has been edifying the populace in general for decades as it relates to the importance of Greencastle Hill and of course the wider significance of Antigua. Our campaign also advocates for a complete end 
to the destruction of the hill and the usage of this great monument for aggregates. Not only because it is such a spiritual and significant real estate, but it is a national treasure and is also listed with the national parks of Antigua and Barbuda. But I am happy to report that it is not all doom and gloom. Of course, with your support, we can continue to edify the nation and of course the international community about the importance of Green Castle Hill. We at Rastafari Experience Antigua and the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge would like to invite you and yours to take the opportunity to visit us here in Antigua and join us on one of our excursions to Green Castle Hill. You could visit us for the spring or the fall equinox or even the summer and the winter solstice. These are peak times. Or if you wish, contact us and we will make arrangements for you to visit us at any time at your leisure. Your accommodations, meals, and the full Rastafari experience awaits you. We also offer the world-famous Wadadli Cannabis Tour, which is an educational outing to the Rastafari community as well as kayaking, ziplining, yoga, and so much more offered by Rastafari Experience and Team. You can book with us today via TripAdvisor Rastafari Experience Antigua or visit the website of the Institute which is Priest Isaac Institute Dot com Rastafari experience or email us priest Isaac Institute at gmail.com this is an experience that you will never forget bring the family and come as they say in Antigua the beach is just the beginning come to Green Castle Hill and walk amongst the stars. Blessed love. Thank you.
beautiful, beautiful, and let me just say, welcome to all those who are coming in, of course. You know, this is a special day. This is the hope open house here at the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge. And you were just viewing our, our latest, newest, short length documentary, Anu, the Ancient City, of course, produced by the Institute of Holistic Knowledge and also associated with Rastafari Experience Antigua. And of course, it is the full house that would have put that together. And of course, the narration myself, but we must give special um, thanks and, and, and even acknowledgement to the young prince, the Honorable Prince Alamasi, who would have put in such mighty works as far as videography going forward um, in the production. We will continue our program, my beautiful family. Again, for those who are coming in, we are officially launching the brand new ancient astronomy certified course, which would have been facilitated by the Institute and myself specifically. This is a five week, that's a month and a week course. My good brothers and sisters, this will definitely assist anyone who wants to take their knowledge to another level as it relates to not only astronomy, but ancient astronomy. So in a few moments, we will get there. I will be presenting a lecture entitled The Rudiments of Ancient Astronomy. But before that, we will be having a very special presentation as it relates to our international homeschool program. As most would know, we would have been facilitating an international homeschool program for about three years now, a certified program as well, which also deals with astronomy designed for the young ones specifically, but the knowledge is of the highest accord. And of course, our ancient African history, which we cannot leave that behind, and biology, yoga, even language arts. So we are relaunching that international homeschool program today as we would have, we would have not only modified it, but we would have improved upon it. And the Honorable Empress Naya, our administrator, our chief administrator here at the Institute of Holistic Knowledge will be gracing us now with her presence and will be uh, giving us some good information as it relates to the International Homeschool Program. The Honorable Empress Naya, blessed love. Yes, blessed love, blessed love to everyone. Let's just do this here. So we are getting into the reason it relates to the International Homeschool Program. We're going to switch screens here. Uh, we should now be seeing or viewing the uh, screen as it relates to the International Homeschool. Let's have an opportunity. Bless it. Bless it. Love everyone. Yes, let's have an opportunity so that I can hear everyone who's here. Just bless it. Love. Give thanks and uh, send a greetings. You can unmute your mics. Bless up, bless up. Yes, bless it, bless up, bless up. Give thanks for your presence. Yeah, I see a few other people are here. All right, so, all right, so. Blessed love. Yes, bless it, give thanks for life. Bless it, bless it. Thanks for life. Yes. <laughs> right. So we got all our family. All right, so you can um go back to muting your mic. So. Welcome to the new and improved international homeschool program. You all, we, we must really give thanks to Honorable Priest Isaac and the full team, you know, for the amazing works that they are providing as it relates to education um, for our youths and then also education for ourselves. 
So this is the new improved international home, homeschool program. Um, this is the page in which uh, many families will see uh, once they register to join the program. Um, and I'll explain that a little bit later in terms of what that process is because people have contacted me in the past. Um, and I'll just clear that up a little bit more. Um, and then I know that there are some people who've actually been enrolled in the um, former international uh, homeschool program, the original one. So we have some updates here. So this will be the landing, this will be the home page, you know, one of the home pages, because uh, once you get into um, once you get into this portal, like once you get your credentials, you add your email and your your password and things like that, and maybe a photo of yourself or some type of emblem to um, to have as an icon for your for yourself. Um, you'll see other various points in which may look like or appear to be a home page. So this is the primary home page, and you'll see here uh, what the international homeschool is about, who, what it's powered by. We we speak a little bit about the courses here, but if you scroll down uh, to this portion of it you'll see much more as it relates to how this program is actually structured. So this is something for you all to know. We have the welcome, we'll get into that. The live classroom meetings, we'll get into that. We have science corner. Everybody knows that we do really big um, uh, science uh, uh, STEM as they call it, uh, science, technology, uh, engineering, and mathematics. We're really good with that here. Um, so this is our science corner. This is a new element of the international homeschool program that wasn't with the, um, the elder courses, uh, which would have been the elder courses. Let's get into that. Are the astronomy? Well, we have astronomy and African heritage. That's the, those were the er elder courses. And then we evolved it to biology. Uh, and, and I think from there, we evolved it to this fuller program of other courses, such as the yoga, the um, African, uh, the black literature, uh, we do black, liter black literature um, to, uh, because it's more diverse than when we're working with, you know, black literature, whether it's written by um, someone who is of uh, African descent, or if, if it's a white author, we include it into the um, the canon in which we would like the children to to read, you know, and to learn. So part of me, I think I see me going out a bit. Yeah, I see me going out. Mm, okay, so we have the science corner, we have the biology lessons. Again, this was a, a newer program that we added about uh, not too long ago, and uh, but we now have the International Homeschool Program as one complete program. So what does that mean? It means you get all of the courses available to you on this one platform. You get the ancient astronomy, you get the new science um, videos, you get the the uh, the biology videos, which is still new, relatively new you get the live meeting sessions, which is where you would have the yoga, all right? So we couldn't pre-record the yoga. We want that to be a very interactive part of the, the program. Um, the yoga would be uh, inclusive of, you know, various people checking in, various families. Um, and uh, if it is, uh, something where uh, it is just, um, it'll be a combination. So the yoga, you'll see people who are probably interested in joining in and then those who are already enrolled, right? So yes, the biology section is very extensive. You can see that. Um, African heritage again and astronomy. So let us see what this looked like. So we should actually have changed now. Um, and this is the portal in which would be the um, actual, uh, as they say, the student um, or the family's portal. This is what it looks like when you're enrolled as a student, right? So we have the, um, 
international homeschool program, uh, pretty much set as a self-paced go um, on your own terms, right? So this is really something that we are encouraging families to join, as you can see, uh, just based upon what I was showing you previously, you can see it here, um, that each section, um, these are the books that we use, because this program comes with digital books, ebooks, right? Uh, ab about many of the things that we create comes with a digital um, ebook, you know, so that you can be reading as you go and then also learning through the, um, the video um, recorded um, recordings. All right. So as you can see, uh, this is pretty much section off, right? Um, and we're gonna do a preview of what some of these lessons look like. This is very much section off and how we've structured this is that um, we have some assignments downloaded onto this platform and you will see that. Um, and then we also have a quiz section as well. Um, and what that would be is just so that you know as any institutional learning space you know we want to make sure that you're understanding comprehending and getting what you're doing that's the children by the way you know so you as the adult have the resources that you need to download to print something to have your child write hand write you know what it is that they were learning and then we also have the quiz element to it which is more virtual um, where uh, you all can um, have your child take an untimed quiz, uh, but the thing is they wouldn't be able to progress to the next um, section of the um, portal until um, you know they actually complete the quiz and they get the quiz to be functioning. Um, I mean, and they, and they get the quiz right is what I meant to say, and they get the quiz right. So this is something where I must say, I've worked you all at a Pan-African school you know, I've gone to uh, a historically black school as well. I must say that this is unlike anything that I've ever seen created. You know, this is great for Pan-African families, not just Rastafari families, you know, who believe in the faith and religion, right? Because we're all children of the most high, but this is really great for Pan-African families. You get so much history culture, language, anything that you think of. That's why it's it's called African heritage, you know, and that is why we call it an international homeschool program. So this speaks about, honestly, this speaks about the black experience through various, various angles of seeing it. We talk about the continental African experience for sure. We highlight those freedom fighters, those, those, those who were a part of the, the liberation as it relate as it relates to the continent of Africa um, as it relates to colonialism we speak about those 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 earlier leaders we speak about the ancients civilizations as well we're adding more um, lessons as well so I mean it's just so much that this will cover but this covers a lot this covers a whole lot you know, so this is um, a one time investment um, when you invest in it and we'll speak about that a little bit more but um, I digress but it's a one time investment it is available um, to you certain parts of it will be made downloadable. Um, and then uh, certain parts of it will just be uh, made to be accessed on this portal only. All right, so we have our new um, corner here and we call this the science corner this is a relatively new part that we have not shared with the international homeschool the former one um, so this would be new to those who are um, formally enrolled and then those who are joining us um, uh, into the uh, future so while that takes time to look let me see here if we can get the sun video to come on board. What's that saying? All right. Well, we are using um, Zoom here. We're sharing it through the Zoom. 
So I wonder if that is the um, the delay in the uh, seeing it. So let me see if I can go to. Okay, seems like we got something coming up. All right. Both the human body and the earth are composed of chemical elements and have many of these elements in common. Oxygen, calcium, sulfur, lithium are major contributors. All right, so let me just reiterate that. We are going to do a preview of what the International Homeschool Program looked like. This is a science video. Um, and as I was sharing with you all, this is a, a new part or a new, yeah, new section of this, um, this course. Um, so if you were a former family, you wouldn't have caught this one. And um, let's just give it a, a look and see what's going on here. Both the human body and the earth are composed of chemical elements and have many of these elements in common. Oxygen, calcium, sulfur, and magnesium are major contributors to the mass of the earth and the weight of the human body. However, there are also differences in elemental composition between the two. Iron, oxygen, silicon, magnesium, nickel, sulfur, calcium, and aluminum are the most significant contributors to the mass of the earth. Oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, calcium, and phosphorus are the most abundant elements found in the human body, followed by potassium, sulfur, sodium, chlorine, and magnesium the earth and the human body and of course the plants and we will include the planets are all one blessed love let's pause that there all right so yes this is um the uh science corner um you will have an opportunity to engage in that. Um, if you're still seeing my screen here, you can see the, the cursor and the cursor is basically showing you the science corner. So then when we stroll here, we're gonna do another preview or example of another program we have here. Let's see. Um, let's see here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So we will check out the African, I'm not really seeing this here, but the African heritage sessions as it relates to, let's see, African heritage, here we go. We're going to check out an African heritage session, uh, um, a lecture or a, a lesson, actually, um, as it relates to learning Swahili. And we're going to look at the Indinkra symbols. Now, again, this is a youth program, right? So this is, is various ways in which you can engage these, um, these lessons here because they're full of um, so much um, content. Uh, they're uh, very... Um, uh, I would say um, something that you should unpack. They're very loaded uh, with information. So as it relates to, um, and as this load, I'm just preparing you, as it relates to the learning Swahili uh, part one and part two, the Indinkra symbols, there are so many ways you can engage this, you know? Um, so we all know that the power of symbols is um, extremely important, right? And we all know that, you know, that's who we are innately, like we, we value um, symbols, you know, we see uh, more than just the symbol, you know, we see the, the energy in which the symbol represents, you know, and, and when, what I'm saying is um, the video itself can be harnessed in other ways if we say like carve out cue cards, because sometimes on this platform, we will upload different worksheets, or we have uploaded it, actually, and I'll show you all different worksheets where you can actually download, you know, utilize it as 
you know, a printable in which you can uh, use as a flashcard, you know, just to familiarize um, the, the child with it, or if you're really trying to take it in and have them learn a new language, you know, which is pretty optimum at that at the at the time when they're youth, you know, to pick on a new a new language is rather easy for them than we think, you know, as adults, you know, um, and, and then for some adults, learning anything at this time is pretty easy, you know, just depending on how 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 lucrative we are within our mindset. Um, but uh, we can you print print some of these symbols out, utilize them as flashcards, you know, and just carve out a time in a day um, as it relates to within a structured um, homeschool environment and or uh, within just an activity that you structure for your child throughout the day. Now, keep in mind with the international homeschool, this is just a supplementary course and this is taking so long to load. I really apologize for that. But this is just a supplementary course program. Um, and by that, I mean uh, that uh, it is not, it's gonna play here, it looks like, let me pause that. It is not a, um, a program in which we're telling you to take your children out the school system. If you choose to do that, you know, we, are, we, we have a program here for you and we're adding more to it. Um, this program is really big with the social sciences. And then also um, we have a literature component um, that is also um, to assist with your, um, I guess your independent learning as it relates to homeschooling your child. So this is a program that we recommend for families who are homeschooling already. Um, even if you've enrolled into the former program, you know, and those who were enrolled into the former program knows how that goes. You get emails, you know, sent to you sporadically, you know, but you get it sent to you regularly. Um, and then that you are to download those emails and then, you know, you view the, the videos, right? So with this program here, um, this is great for an extracurricular learning activity. Yes, I see your hand, but I'm going to, um, I'll get it, I'll, I'll, I'll have, we'll all, everybody will have an opportunity to, to speak towards the end. Um, so I do see your hand. I apologize uh, for not acknowledging until now. Just try to write your question or comment down and then toward the end, we'll address it. Um, so then uh, what I'm sharing is, uh, this is also good for people who are homeschooling and extracurricular activity if you're not homeschooling, right? Because we all know, we all know, even, even me with my, my degrees and things like that, we all know that the school system does not really feel in the knowledge in terms of know thyself. So this is the route that we're taking. We're taking a holistic approach as it relates to knowing thyself, you know, and that's what we do. And, and just to say, it's just very rare to find these programs. So yes, this is something that you should really share, you know, share with others, you know, um, and to, to jump on board with this learning opportunity. So let's just get a preview of the um, Indinker symbols here. And then from there, uh, we will, uh, you know, uh, seal up this portion of the International Homeschool Program. All right. Blessed love. Oh, give thanks for your presence with us today. Of course, you know, this is another classroom session. And we are going into our African history on our African heritage today. Let me just say blessed love to everyone. You know, it is a joy to see you. As always, I am happy to see you. This is our 18th class. Eh? One eight. Keep track. Our 18th class of our African history.
right, so I just wanted to give you all a sneak preview and a glimpse of that. But this is exactly what I was sharing in terms of how the symbols just comes and they go and they appears across the screen. And of course, this is a um, pre-recorded um, lesson plan. So of course you have the instructor, Honorable Priest Isaac, you know, in, in every assignment, just, you know, speaking to the children, speaking to you, your family, um, and in preparing you and engaging you for the lesson that is to come. So just with this example here, you know, as simple as it is, but, you know, we can move to the, um, I think it sounds like a cello or something, I don't know, or a xyrophone, or, and then we can move through the, uh, the music, and then we can see the different symbols. And all I'm saying is that this is an evergreen here that we can actually have you all to um, to download the flashcards, you know, and to utilize, you know, flashcards as it relates to um, trying to help your child uh, memorize the symbols, uh, trying to help your child to actually speak the language, which is key Swahili. Um, and uh, it's just an amazing tool here. So um, yes, yeah, so let me, um, in fact, I think I'm going to go ahead and take some questions. Let me mute my camera or uh, basically turn off my camera for a while. And I'm going to make some adjustments here so that we can um, get to the, um, the, the courses screen again so that we can have an idea on that. All right. So before we uh, get to that, let me just give you an idea of the, the live part. All right. So. As we have here, now this screen here is showing the live classroom meetings. This is what you can expect. You can expect the yoga here. You can expect the yoga here. You can expect the, um, we do this thing where, um, and, and as we've been, um, you know, renovating this project, this, 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 this program and this, through this platform, um, we do things like um, a free virtual event um, open to the international community where different families can come on and just learn a lesson, you know, learn a lesson from a guest lecturer or from Honorable Priest Isaac himself, right? And this is the tab in which you, or the area in which you would be able to come and to join live with your children. And it's very fun. Most times uh, the children, I will engage it, um, children as, as as young as seven to as old as I've seen 16 or something like that, they would engage, you know, and they would speak um, and, and, and be interactive with this. So this is something that you, 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 you would, you would want to share with other families and you yourself would want to take advantage. So this is a free component um, that we do, will house through Zoom. Um, but of course, if you're into the program, you would be able to um, see it through uh, this platform. All right, so this is the live classroom meetings, right? Um, and then we have the different um, assignments that you'll see in each section that you can just download um, and also uh, uh, print, you know, for, for your child. Yes, so. Yes, so. Um, Yes, so we, we just want to, um, I just want to take this time out to say that, you know, we are, of course, a um, Pan-African um, Rastafari background um, uh, uh, institution um, space for learning. You know, that's what we promote. We promote what we are. We're very, very conscious about that. But we have different families that are joining us from different backgrounds who actually are very humbled in their approach in terms of what they're seeking to gain and how they're trying to um, utilize this knowledge and information for um, pretty much the purposes of, you know, you know, dispelling whatever, you know, confusion that Babylon also feeds to their child. So we're, we are, um, uh, representing a level of diversity. This is not just for the EABIC uh, Bobo Shanti family, the International Homeschool Program. This is for anyone who sees the value of Pan-African knowledge and Rastafari knowledge for their youths, okay? Yeah, so we're, we, we're pretty, we're pretty um, uh, 
big on that. I just want there to be some level of um, awareness, you know, that uh, we are, um, yeah, we're pretty much uh, diverse in that way, you know. So the courses, right? I don't know if you all can still see. Okay, the courses uh, are going to be available on the um, Institute tab, uh, Institute website, pardon me, not the tab. The tab is called courses and is going to be available on the Institute web website. Um, and it will be the last option here. So the full program is, it, it, it is 500 US, is valued at 500 US. And this is a one-time payment for a lifetime uh, use, right? Um, and then knowing that we would be on um, ongoingly uploading um, new, new lessons, new subjects, um, and then we also have the live component component that we would be um, interactive with um, ongoing as well. You know, we don't have a schedule set for the live sessions, but that will be to come in the immediate future now that we're relaunching this on a um, on a neater platform, you know, on a platform that compiles all of our information that archives it and where you can access it. So, yes, yeah, so the um, program right now um, is for 150 um, US. This is in US um, dollar um, amount or currency. The, uh, the sale right now is just to get you, uh, you all to come, to come, to come and to enroll into the platform. Um, I think that's what I wanted to do. So there are, families who are currently enrolled into the international homeschool program, right? So we had to come up, we had to really compartmentalize these things because the international homeschool program, what it was originally is what you're enrolled in, right? So it was African heritage and astronomy or biology, you know? And if you were in the African heritage and the astronomy um, international homeschool, you were being emailed um, different days, different subjects, and your monthly subscription covers that, right? So we're saying with this new platform, it's a different um, uh, level, right? It's a different level, meaning um, the subscription um, rate is no longer what it was for the former program, right? Because um, we have to keep in mind, you know, this is a, a, a it, this is an actual resource, you know, um, where the live, uh, the live classrooms as it relates to yoga is actually a different um, level of, um, of, of time, you know, and energy. Um, and then also we have to keep in mind that you're getting all the courses combined into one. Um, so if you are interested in upgrading your subscription, contact us by email and we will discuss the monthly pricing for you. If you are still um, in the former program and that's where you choose to stay, no problem. You can stay there and we'll continue to um, service your emails um, daily, right? But if you're looking to come into this program, this was a this was a time, and my time is getting short too, um, for speaking. But this was a time when um, we offered this program free for families who um, formally invested. Okay, so those who are enrolled and sign up, you're good to go, right? But those who miss that, you know, to come on board, you will have to now. Um, reinvest into the program, right? Because that was a limited time offer kind of thing. So I share that to say that those who were formerly enrolled into the program, this is, a, this is a new program, this is relaunched and this is everything on this one site. Um, uh, lessons and things that we would have done re rather uh, relevantly a month or two ago um, and even months before. Um, so uh, your process would be to pretty much re-enroll, you know, um, and you can do it by the monthly subscription or you can do it by the 
um, one-time payment. The one-time payment right now is on sale for 150 US and the one-time uh, payment after the sale would be 500 US. Give me a second there. Um, give me a second there. I'm gonna get to you all soon, um, very, very soon. Now, as it relates to the, um, hmm, the uh, monthly subscription, just email us. Um, I'm not sure if I can get it there or I can have the tech person get it there. Uh, that may be a case in which we can, um, but the monthly subscription is not an issue. Just email us and then um, the idea of it is uh, that it's easier to do the one-time payment, right? But if you wanna do the monthly subscription, that would be um, totally just for your cause. So, well, well, we didn't have a chance to show Rastafari Experience in Tiga um, tab, but uh, as you all see it there, this is Rastafari Experience in Tiga tab. Um, just take some time to see the, the website because it's being revamped. Uh, the astronomy courses and the study program as it relates to um, uh, coming um, and to do coursework on Greencastle Hill will be uh, relayed on this tab, which is the courses tab, right? Um, you'll see that somewhere here. All right, so let me have, um, let me see, let me have an opportunity to see um, what is being said here. All uh, right, yeah, blessed love, honorable, give thanks for life. All right, all right. So there was some questions here, um, honorable priest. I can um, spend some time to take these questions. All right, yes, as it relates to the International Homeschool Program, youth development, um, what are your thoughts? Even if you have a comment and wanna share uh, feedback. Mine is low. So you can't hear me? Okay. Oh, your sound is low, maybe. All right. Well, all right, uh, family. Uh, well, this will be shared um, to you all via the Institute um, channel. Um, give thanks for life again. We want to bless it up. Mm. Good. Yeah, man. It's all good, man. Can oh. Yes. Oh, bless it. Good things. All right. So we're going to transition this into the next segment. Honorable priest, Isaac. Well, I'm very thankful and blessed love to the honorable empress for such a conversation there. Give thanks to all those who are just coming in as well. And so many things would have um, you know, transpired for those who are just coming in. We've been having a wonderful day. This is basically, as was said, the, the, uh, the open house. You know, this is the open house day. We are definitely giving thanks for all those who are here with us. And give thanks for those who have been with us from the beginning and the honorable empress would have given us a beautiful presentation a moment ago as it relates to the international homeschool program and the international homeschool program is um, definitely available and all the information would have been set back there for you so again you have um you have the email priest Isaac Institute at gmail.com. Priest Isaac Institute at gmail.com. And from you hit that, you get all the information that you need as it relates to everything that the Honorable Empress just said. What a beautiful vibration that we just got a moment ago. Now, what I am going to do, we're going to um, go into the third a part of our presentation this afternoon. Again, for those who may just be coming in, we had a wonderful uh, video watch uh, prepared by the Institute, um, specifically or particularly the Honorable Prince Alamasa. We're talking about Anu, the ancient city. That was a very beautiful, beautiful presentation. 
And then the same thing is said of the, must be said of the Honorable Empress Naya in her presentation a moment ago, highlighting the international homeschool program. I think that was clear as crystal. And I think everyone that was observing and watching would you know, have a good idea of what the homeschool program is all about. Now, what we're going to do now, we're going to highlight the ancient astronomy course. And uh, for, for that, I will be giving a short presentation entitled The Rudiments of Ancient Astronomy. Now, actually, maybe I should have had the Honorable Empress explain to you <laughs> how the ancient astronomy course can be um, can be accessed, but it's okay. She will come and do a bit of that for me in a moment. But how I would like to begin this presentation here is to first of all let you know that um, in in a, in a similar way as the Honorable Empress would have just expressed uh, how you could access the International Homeschool Program in a very similar way. It is the same with the ancient astronomy, the ancient astronomy course. Of course, you would have seen the website once again, once you visit the website, again, the website itself, priestisaacinstitute at gmail.com. Let me just carry you there for myself so we could just go through it. Of course, here it is, Priest Isaac Institute. Uh, dot com, preciseinstitute.com, and right at the top of the courses section, you see ancient astronomy. And of course, this is a $275 course. It is a month and one week. Uh, it can be extended depending on the speed of the scholar, what we call student. Um, the course itself actually is in five sections. My family, listen to me good, the course is in five sections. And at the end of each section, you will be quizzed. I want you to understand what's going on. Um, you will be quizzed on exactly what you would have studied for that week. So in other words, you will be receiving um, several videos, 16, 16 specific chapters. 16 specific chapters of which I will share with you one of the chapters in a few moments. And again, these chapters are divided into five sections, uh, which uh, carry you to the five weeks or the one month and a week, which is the length of the course. And at the end of the course with your grade, you will be given your certification as it relates to ancient astronomy provided by the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge. Now, what I would like to do is to just give you an idea of what you would be getting when you join us and become a part of the ancient astronomy course. Now, family, this is a subject area that is very void, lacking, if you want to say, even within what is known as the conscious community. Because we must understand ancient astronomy is what morphs into archaeoastronomy and then the granddaddy astrotheology. Religion in general is astro theology. Now, I would like to begin on this leg here. And this is an excerpt from the actual course. As I said, when you when you enroll in this course, you can ex you can expect to have 16 chapters plus an introduction as it relates to the package. So I'm going to be highlight into you one of these chapters uh, for the moment here. And this chapter is entitled The Stars. So I just want you to take this in so you have an idea of what you are getting when you go into the course. <laughs> The fact that the ancient Dogon people could detect Sirius B 
called Sigitol means that they had a clear astrophysical understanding of this star system just to detect it alone. The star Sirius is the brightest star in the night sky. It has a magnitude of minus 1.46. The magnitude refers to the brightness of the star or other celestial bodies. The brighter the object, the lower the magnitude, at least the numbers assigned to it. So the brighter an object appears, the lower the value of its magnitude. The brightest objects in the sky are negative in number. In ancient astronomy, we observe both apparent magnitude and absolute magnitude. Apparent magnitude is the brightness of an object as it appears in the sky from Earth. Apparent magnitude depends on the object's actual luminosity, its distance, and the extinction reducing its brightness. In astronomy, extinction is the absorption and scattering of electromagnetic radiation by dust and gas between an emitting astronomical object and the observer. Absolute magnitude describes the actual luminosity of the object. The brightest object in our sky is our star, Ra, the sun. The sun has an apparent magnitude of minus 27. The moon, minus 12.6. Venus apparent magnitude is minus 4.14 and minus 5 at its brightest and Sirius the brightest visible star in the night sky is minus 1.46 one of the reasons why stars like Sirius appears to be so bright is their close proximity to the earth Sirius is approximately 8.6 light years away from Earth. Sirius has a mass that is two times that of Ra, the Sun, and more than 20 times the brightness of the same in actual brightness. Ancient astronomers not only understood the science of Sirius A, but also Sirius B. Modern astronomy claims discovery of Sirius B on the 31st day of January, 1862. But again, the ancients would not only have detected it, but they would have mapped its orbit. Sirius B is one of the most massive white dwarfs known by modern astronomy. Its mass is 1.02 solar mass, while the mass of Sirius A is 2.063 solar mass. Sirius B's current surface temperature is 25,200 Kelvin. Okay, blessed love. Now, obviously, we could go on and on with that. And that is just basically uh, uh, just giving you an idea of what is in store for you when you enroll in the ancient astronomy program. Now, it's not a program of documentaries, you know. What you were just observing a moment ago, those are study videos. And as I said, you have 16 chapters and it's videos as well as 
uh, material that you will have to read. And this will take you one month and a week, or you can extend the class if you desire. In fact, even if you're not pleased with the grade you get, um, depending on the different sections, you have a chance where you could do over the test or do over the quiz again. Now, as you can see for sure, and you just got us like a drop in the bucket a moment ago. As I said, the course itself is $275 for the course. But today we are uh, uh, giving it at a value of just $100 for those who are here on the platform, for those who would get the word before it's too late, you know, uh, before the end of this day, officially, according to the calendar, this course is still available for $100. Now, the actual very the first course itself will be on the 21st day of May. And until the 21st day of May, those who make sure they enroll before that will get it for only $195. But after that, it is the price, which is $200 and $75. Now, of course, beautiful presentation, really. And of course, I, I must give all credit to those of us here on staff at the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge and, and those who would have put this event together. Now, when it comes to ancient astronomy, now a moment ago, we were speaking about the stars. That chapter is entitled The Stars. In the course, you have the stars, we talk about the sun, we go into um, a bit of the history uh, when it comes to the whole aspect of the celestial coordinates. Then we go into a bit of archaeoastronomy, because you must keep in mind that archaeoastronomy is the child of ancient astronomy. You must keep in mind as well that uh, uh, astrotheology is the child of ancient astronomy, because ancient astronomy takes into consideration the value of the planets. This is the difference. Eh? Ancient uh, astronomy takes into consideration the value of the constellations and how they relate to human beings, how they relate to your organs, how they relate to plants and all of these different things. Now, modern day astronomy doesn't bother with that at all at all. They couldn't care less about what's the value of Mars. They just want to know if water was on Mars or who lives up there and what's the deepest canyon. All of that is good because that's what we observed in ancient astronomy. But also at the same time, we understood that the universe is a living spirit. The universe has a frequency. The universe has vibrations. And in the same way that the moon affects the water table and the sun affects the opening of the petals of the flower, Mars and Venus and Jupiter and Saturn affects something, whether it affects you know, the, 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 the cycle of your blood or your respiratory system or your, your um, um, you know, hormones, whatever it is, they have a connection. Why? Because as one of the videos the Honorable Empress showed earlier for the International Home School for Little Children, that video was explaining to you that the makeup of the human being is the same as the makeup of the earth. And in the same way, the planets, because all the planets are not the same. Some planets are rocky planets, some are gas giants, and their makeup are, um, 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 are different between themselves. But yet still, depending on their makeup, they're connected to specific plants and elements on the planet earth that have the similar makeup as they. That is why certain people, depending on even when you were born, depending on where the planets were at your birth or the day you came into existence, it relates to specific plants. You know, certain plants, whatever it may be, may be more effective to you than someone else that was born at a specific time. Ancient astronomy takes into consideration all of this. Now, this sounds like astrology because this is the astrological language. But the difference is that astrology now is not in tune with the mechanics of astronomy. So ancient astronomy basically morphs the best of both worlds and put out the ignorance that both worlds carries with them. Okay, fair enough. So obviously now, the, the chapter that you just um, um, observed there a moment ago, again, that is directly from the class. Eh? That's from the class itself. You just got a sneak preview of the class, the ancient astronomy course. And you could see that it was speaking of the Dogans. 
Now, prior to that chapter, we would have done um, chapters leading up to that chapter, even mentioning the Dogans. Now, when it comes to ancient astronomy, we obviously have to begin with some level of history. Now, the Dogans, before we get too deep into the history, did you hear what we said about Sirius B? We spoke about it being um, 25,200 Kelvins. That's how hot Sirius B is. We, we spoke about it being twice the size of the sun and, and maybe 33 times the density thereof. That's, that's the stats on Sirius B. My point is that the Dogen people who would have seen or detected Sirius B before modern day astronomy, they obviously would have had knowledge of all that we just said about Sirius B. All right, this is important, you know, because when you observe, what we like to say is that the Dogans, these ancient people would have seen Sirius B before modern day astronomy. Modern day astronomy just discovered Sirius B just a bit over a hundred years ago. But hundreds of years ago, the Dogen people of Africa would have detected Sirius B. And there's a reason why I use the term detected. I'm not saying they didn't see it, but you don't have to see something to detect it. Even modern day astronomy is not everything that they see, you know, because they utilize different frequencies and different waves, gamma waves, uh, uh, infrared, um, ultraviolet, um, radio waves. This is why you have radio astronomy. And because you overlay the different waves, galaxies and, and nebulae and these things expose themselves. So the point is that the Dogans, and you must keep this in mind, this is very important. The Dogans, the fact that they could have detected Sirius B, whether they saw it or heard it, that means they had to understand its weight. They had to comprehend its density. They didn't just see it and say, oh, we can see that. They knew its uh, orbit around Sirius A, 50 years. That, that is recorded. So the fact that they knew the orbit of Sirius B around Sirius A, they had to know its weight. That's how science today um, detect these things. They had to know its velocity and they had to understand its density or else they could not have detected it, much less to tell you its orbit around Sirius A. Ancient astronomy, my family. So when we visit the temple now in Dendara of Hetheru, also called Hathor, which is said to have been established almost 3000 years BCE, almost five, thousand years ago and it is inside of this temple you see the famous bas relief of of what is considered to be the zodiac symbols from the taurus to to um, leo the lion and and of course the risen beetle and for those who understand science and understand astronomy you would even notice that the constellation are actually in the order that they are in the heavens so you see Virgo just behind of Leo the lion. It's Leo and Virgo and Libra and the Scorpio and the Archer and everything even in this order. Then when you look now on the roof of the same uh, uh, temple, you will also come across the great Nut, now net uh, and bringing forth the sun out of her womb. So the point is now that in ancient sea, we always had an understanding of the heavens. Now, this is the Greek and Roman version of the God known as Mercury. Now, I'm just bringing this to the forefront so you understand why in astrology, planets are given um, specific traits and understanding. Now, the Greeks were not just thinking fanciful. Maybe they do at times, but in the case of naming their planets and giving them the attributes of the gods, it was not something that they were just, you know, pulling out of their head. When the Greeks came to ancient Egypt, again, ancient Kemet, and they sat at the feet of the masters, we were the ones that taught them. You see that 
little light there in the sky. That's the planet Mercury. Oh, I thought it was a star. No, it's not a star. It's a planet. And Mercury is the swiftest of the planets, meaning that it goes around the sun uh, uh, um, the, the fastest, plus it appears to be the swiftest planet in the movements of the heavens from Earth. Just as the moon appears to be swifter than the sun, because that's the apparent movement, Mercury has the fastest apparent movement of all the planets. That's what we taught them. It goes around the sun 80, in 88 days. In 88 Earth days, Mercury goes around the sun. 88 is a very key number. Remember, there are 88 known constellations mapped from ancient times. Okay, good. So Mercury takes 88 Earth days to go around the sun once. So this is what we taught them. Mercury is the swiftest planet. What they did in their theology, which they also got from us too, but because theology started from Africa, all of the different angels and, and saints and these ones were, were crafted from ancient African Medunete, the ancient African gods, even the constellations that we call, for example, Aries. Aries is Amun-Ra. Taurus is, is, is um, the said Hathor in feminine and Apis, the masculine bull. You know, Gemini, Castor and Porlox is, is, uh, is, is Shu and Tefnut, you understand. So when you see how everything has been changed, Cancer is Kepra, the risen dung beetle. All right, very good. Now, again, when they studied ancient Egypt and they went back to Greece, the planet that we show them as Mercury, it is they that apply that name Mercury because Mercury is the God of speed. Mercury is the messenger. Mercury moves fast. Mercury is swift. Mercury has wings on his, on his hat. Mercury has wings on his feet. So Mercury now, the attribute of this God Mercury is the same attribute of the planet Mercury as it goes around the sun swiftly. You know, remember, you know, in the ancient sea, even when you consider the planet Jupiter, Jupiter is considered to be the god of the planets. Why is this? Okay, obviously Jupiter is the largest of the planets, but those who came to ancient Africa and learned at the feet of the ancient ones in Egypt and Ethiopia, they didn't know that it was the largest planet. We had to tell them that. Now, don't deny this, you know, family. We were the ones that saw Sirius B. We were the ones that knew the weight of Sirius B hundreds upon hundreds of years ago before those discoverers discovered it about last week. So we understood that Jupiter was the largest of the giants and Jupiter had a magnetosphere and it still has it. It has a magnetosphere. It's, it's, it's magnetosphere is rival. It rivals that of the magnetosphere of even the sun. And it is said now that Jupiter would attract space debris like meteorites and these things that would damage the planet Earth and other planets and would pull them into itself. Now these space debris cannot damage Jupiter because its environment is extremely harsh for them. But Earth's environment, you know, that's why you see a shooting star. That's when a, a meteorite comes in and it burns up because of the harshness of the Earth's atmosphere. But some of them get through. Some of them pass through and can do some damage, you know, to the planet. But the vast majority of them were, were detoured and crashed into Jupiter because of the strong magnetosphere that it has beautiful all right now with great understanding family let me just show you this now these are the sumerians this is just well they say a crash course but we're not crashing today these are the sumerians now the sumerians many people argue that this is the first civilization i would not give them that but i'm not here to to debate that today so even if you think they're the first civilization it's okay because they're african and the Sumerians now in ancient Iraq, you would see here they have the sun and the planets around the sun. Now, 
you have at least nine major balls here. I know modern day astronomy arguing about Pluto, but again, in ancient Sumer, which is considered in social science, the oldest civilization, the first writers. And again, that is not necessarily true, but it just means that they are in the ballpark of very, very old. And you can see that they have the sun with the nine planets. This is before James Webb. This is before Herschel. This is before Galileo Galilea. This is before Einstein. This is before Isaac Newton, way before them, even before their people even started to see the sunlight. We in ancient Africa, because all of this is an extension of the African civilization, by the way, in ancient Iraq, already showing you the sun and the solar system. That's as serious as it can get. In Napta Playa, this is in, um, this is not Greencastle Hill now, this is in ancient Kemet, again, in southern, southern Egypt, as it's called, Upper Kemet. You have uh, the erection of these stelas in the formation where they align with the equinoxes and they align with the solstices. And this is before Stonehenge was established. So, so you can see here for yourself how valuable ancient astronomy is. And as I said, this is not an extended um, lecture that we're doing, but somewhat just preparing you for even the ancient astronomy course that we are presenting. Now, what you're looking here at here is basically the cover of the book, which goes with the course, because I can tell you now, we also have an Arcue astronomy course coming up. I cannot tell you exactly when that will be launched. It could be months. It may take a little more than months, but it's going to be extensive as well. And we have an astrotheology course uh, um, coming up as well. And each of these courses will come with the book. Now, this book, basically, this book, just to show you how precise the course is, this book is the written version of the course that you will be um, enrolling into which is the rudiments of ancient astronomy. Now, you know, let me just come a bit off a script here. Eh? I mean, family, this is no joke. Eh? We can't be running down YouTube videos forever and think we want to entertain ourselves and ha 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 and la la la. I am offering a serious course that myself and the full royal family would have taken time, invested energy and prepared for you. This is a very, very inexpensive course for the value of what it is, I am telling you, because I know what it is. Very inexpensive at $275. And today, you can get it if you enroll today for $100. If you miss today, you still have until the 21st of May when the first course will be issued out to get it for $195, which is still great, even $275 is still great any which way you turn it. Now, what I want to do before I seal up my presentation here, I want to give you another sneak preview of what the course has to offer. Now, at the beginning, you saw the chapter written, um, the chapter, pardon me, on stars and written too, because it's a chapter in the actual book. Those, those who enroll in the course, you get the book, you know, the book is a part of the course. And um, an individual can actually uh, purchase the book without enrolling in the course as well. And the book also will be available when the first course actually rolls out. Now, as I said, what we did a moment ago, that little presentation I gave really was to somewhat give you an idea of the historical understanding of ancient astronomy. But the ancient astronomy course is not a history course. History is a part of it, but it is an academic course family. When you are completed with my course, you can speak to anybody in the field of astronomy and know what you're saying. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just give you a next, next um, bit from an excerpt. This excerpt is entitled Celestial Academics. And um, let's just take it in. Yes, it was.
A sidereal day is the time taken by the earth to rotate on its axis relative to the stars. A sidereal day is 23 hours, 56 minutes, 4.091 seconds. This means that each star will rise 3 minutes, 56 seconds later than it did previously. Like the islands, cities, and towns, every object in the sky has two numbers that fix its location called right ascension and declination, more generally referred to as the object's celestial coordinates. Declination is the celestial sphere's equivalent to latitude and it is expressed in degrees as is latitude for declination positive and negative refers to north and south respectively the celestial equator is zero degrees declination and the poles are 90 degrees positive 90 degrees and negative 90 degrees north and south right ascension is the celestial equivalent to longitude betelgeuse also referred to as betelgeuse is a red supergiant and one of the largest stars visible to the naked eye it is also referred to as Alpha Orionis, marking the eastern or right shoulder of the constellation of Sahu, also called Orion. The celestial coordinates of Betelgeuse are right ascension, 5 hours, 55 minutes, 10 seconds. Declination, positive 7 degrees, 24 minutes, 26 seconds. On the other side of the celestial equator, you have the brightest star in the constellation of Asahu, its left foot, Rigel. Rigel, also called Beta Orionis, is a blue-white supergiant located about 870 light years away from the earth and is about 47,000 times as luminous as our sun. Regal's celestial coordinates are right ascension 5 hours 14 minutes 32.3 seconds declination Minus 8 degrees, 12 minutes, 5.9 seconds. The Earth's ellipse, which is known as the ecliptic, is the plane of Earth's orbit around the Sun. The Earth's axis is not perpendicular to the ecliptic but has an inclined angle of 23.5 degrees. This is called obliquity. This obliquity, coupled with the Earth's orbit around the sun, determines how we see the heavens around us. We observe the sky as a spherical surface. This is why it's called the celestial sphere. With all of this taken into consideration, the celestial latitude and longitude declination and right ascension was established to give coordinates to the apparently fixed objects and moving ones as well. Now that we comprehend 
declination and right ascension, let us look at another system of coordinates known as azimuth altitude coordinate system. Depending on the hemisphere of the observer, north or south, the celestial pole becomes an essential point. As observers, we see everything rotating around the celestial poles. Imagine facing true north. Draw a line from the celestial pole until it hits the horizon. The azimuth of the object that you have identified will be the angle of its clockwise bearing from geographical north. The All right. Well, blessed love. Good thanks for this um, presentation that has taken place today, also in the lecture component. So you all are more than um, uh, welcome to um, enroll into the ancient astronomy uh, course by the Priest Isaac Institute of Holistic Knowledge by visiting the Priest Isaac Institute website forward slash courses, um, and you will see uh, the um, course available uh, for you. As it relates to the International Homeschool Program, again, you all are more than welcome to uh, contact us via the email if you haven't enrolled. Again, this is a program in which you can um, really feel um, a level of complete, um, uh, I guess, uh, a com competence within yourself and confidence within yourself in terms of investing in a program that really works towards um, the, the preservation of our heritage, you know, as people of African descent. Um, this is an important program as well. Uh, it has all of the co components of which you see, the yoga, the biology, the literature component. Um, and just know that what you um, were shown, more is being added to it. We have over, um, over 150 lessons, right? And let me share with you, 150 lessons may not sound like a lot, but trust me, when you click the play button, it's very rich, you know, it's very spiritually rich, you know, it's educational, it's very creative, it's something that I can assure you that you can find various, various assignments outside of the assignments that we offer and upload to the portal that you can do with your child that would make you want to take it bit by bit, you know, and then that's what we encourage you to do, you know, to keep this program as a self-paced program. Um, and then to join us collectively uh, when we do our live sessions, um, which is uh, <clears throat> uh, complimentary to you signing up to the program. So the full um, one-time payment um, right now is at 150 US. Uh, and then the, uh, the monthly subscription, just email us for that um, if you want to become um, on the monthly subscription plan, and we'll send you information on that. Um, and then also know um, that uh, between these courses, between these uh, courses that we have um, uh, presented today, um, if you have any questions about it, you can also email us on that, and we'll certainly um, be able to respond to you. But it looks like we're sealing up this program and this presentation right on time as we shared. We're on time, just a little bit behind, um, just a little bit over, but um, give thanks for life. You know, give thanks to the Most High, the Emperor, Queen Omega. Give thanks for all of the love that has come through. Um, and we know and we value and cherish this information. You know, this is something that is unlike anything uh, that we, that I've, I've accessed, you know, and this is from um, my, um, my own, you know, uh, spiritual understanding and, and learning. This is a totally new energy. We know that, you know, ancient astronomy, um, 
uh, or in in other way in other terms, I think they like to 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 call it like Earth science or um, these different things, you know, like a NASA thing. You know, you know, we know that we're in good hands based upon what we just saw. Everybody had spirit, soul had to have filled something, you know. So, all right, you all give thanks, and we are going to seal this program up. You know, mighty, mighty works ahead. Blessed love. Give thanks to all who were present. Um, in one love, peace. Blessed love. Holy man, rise. Last year. Yeah. Last year. All right. Blessed love, royal family. Give thanks for life. Blessed love. Blessed love.